Hey guys, William Justice here. Blackmagic just released DaVinci Resolve 18. It looks like a big update. They have some cloud features and a lot, of, a lot of new things in there. Not quite as much in the effects and editing area, but we're gonna jump in and see what all we can do with it. We're gonna check out the Surface Tracker. The release notes also mentioned something about the duplicate node being a little bit faster and having some new options. So we're gonna load that in Fusion and see what we can do with some of the new options. The real big update for Resolve 18 is the cloud features. These allow you to work with other people on the same project and make it really easy to synchronize and share files. For the effects and editing, um, there's not a whole lot in there, but hopefully there's some performance improvements and some things that are gonna help us make better videos. Resolve 18 is beta test software, so um, make sure that you don't install it on any system where you're working on active projects that you don't want to lose. Make sure that you back up all your files just in case. Um, from my experience, it seems to work pretty good. So uh, first we're going to check out the Surface Tracker. I'm going to going to put something on my hand and see how that goes. And then I'm going to add something to my face and see how good it tracks on my face. We're going to just play with it and try to get an idea of how it works. Let's take a real quick look at the surface tracker. Um, first, you wanna find a video with, that has a surface that you wanna track and attach an image to. And right here, we're gonna do it with the palm of my hand. The surface tracker is inside the color tab. So with the clip selected, click the color option at the bottom of the screen. Search for surface tracker in the effects library. Take the surface tracker and drag it into the node area and make sure you connect it up with the output of the main node going through the green arrow and green output of the surface tracker. There's four areas of the surface tracker. The first step is to define the area that you want to track. All you have to do is go into the viewer and click the area that you want to track. It took a little bit of trial and error for me, but uh, it works best when you have the area pretty close to the region that you want to track and not too big. Next, click the mesh button and you'll see all the points that are going to be tracked. You can adjust the number of points and some other options. You kind of have to play with these to get it working the way you want. Okay, once you have all the points, click track. Track is going to go through each of the frames in your clip and track each of the points. We're going to go ahead and set quality to better. And when we click track forward and track backwards, it's going to go through each of the frames in our clip and track all of the points. Let's play this to see what our track looks like. That looks pretty good right there. I had to try a lot of different options. It was actually quite a bit of work to get it to um, do what I wanted. Um, I'm still learning how to use each, each of the options. Um, so if it doesn't do what you want, just try some different things and see how it works. Once we have the track, we're going to click the results button. And this is where we're going to attach an image and adjust how the image looks within that tracked area. So we're going to take the resolve logo and drag it into the node area. Next, take the green output of the resolve logo and drop it into the second green input on the surface tracker. That's going to add our image. So with the results, we can adjust how this image looks within the tracked area. To do this, we're going to open up Overlay Placement, and we're going to set it to Sliders. With Sliders, we can scroll down and open up the Canvas Position Sliders, and this is going to allow us to adjust the position of the logo. So you're going to want to adjust the size, the X and Y, and the rotation to kind of get it to fit the way you want. And notice that there's that black border around there. To fix that, all we need to do is take the top blue output of the image and drop it into the bottom blue input for the mask. And that's going to mask it out. Now let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. Pretty good. We can scroll down and on the composite type, we're going to change that to overlay and drop the opacity to kind of get it to blend in a little more naturally with my hand. And that's the basics of the surface tracker. It took a, let me a quite a bit of time to play around with it to get it to track the way I wanted to. Um, but ultimately I think I got it where it was looking pretty good. Next, we're going to check out the duplicate node. It's supposed to be a little bit faster, and there's some blur and glow options. So let's, uh, we're going to make a duplicate thing just to try out the features. So we have a fusion composition. Let's get into fusion. We're going to add a background. And I'm just going to create a small circle with a background node and a mask. With background two, um, we're going to hit control space and search for duplicate. Add that in, and we're going to create, uh, let's create a... Uh, eight copies and we're going to space them out a little bit. So the new options are down here in this blur area. The new options are in this blur area. So we can actually blur each of the copies. You see they're kind of blurring right there. Um, you can also uncheck lock blur and only blur the X or the Y. So there's some kind of interesting effects there. I'm going to just create a little, a little tail thing. We're going to go to jitter 
and go to blur and go to gain. And we're going to crank up each of the gains and this is going to get us some different colors. Go back to controls and we're going to blur it in the X direction. And that's going to kind of blend all those together a little bit and add some glow in. Let's space them out a little bit more so we can kind of see the colors. Okay, next we're going to go to the ellipse, right click on center and choose modify with perturb. And that's going to get, get it bouncing around a little bit, that first dot. Let's go to modifiers. We're going to take down the X scale, so it's only going to bounce around in the Y direction. And we're going to take down the strength a little bit. Okay, next we're going to go to the duplicate node and we're going to adjust the time offset. Let's put it at uh, three. Go with one. And lastly, we're going to go back to the jitter and we're going to change this random seed. We're going to um, just animate it. So we're going to right click and say uh, modify with anim curves. And that's going to change our seed with every frame. So we're going to get some different colors in this tail right here. And let's see what we got. Uh, actually, let's say uh, we're going to add a little bit of a glow, more glow in. And we're going to take all that and we're going to add a soft glow to it. And we're going to render this and let's see what we have. Okay, this took quite a while to render, but uh, here's what we got. Inter um, interesting effect, doesn't look too bad. Um, a lot of different options with that. I don't know um, exactly what I would use that blur for, but uh, just kind of wanted to see if I could make something with it. All right, so this was, this was not a big in-depth look at Resolve 18. This, this was just a quick dive in to play around with some of the new features and start getting familiar with what we can do. If you like my videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Um, we've got a new video. Hopefully, I'm, it's going to be coming up pretty soon. It's going to have this guy in it right here. I'm going to use that to hopefully do something interesting. Um, anyway, I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching.